good afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you are. It's me again, Jen. Hello! And we are talking today about the Sake Sake Tarot deck, and we are comparing it to the more traditional Rider Waite deck. And mine is in this neat little bag that I think was my mom's, potentially my great-grandmother's, I'm not sure. And maybe my mom will watch this and go, Jen, you're talking crazy. Anyway, this deck is my grandmother's deck, and that is why I really don't read with it very often. I use it in my classes just to show more traditional cards, but I'm always afraid to ruin it or something, so I like to use my more fun decks that I can always replace because I bought them myself or they were gifted to me, and they're more modern. So you knew this was coming. Today we are picking on the death card. So most people freak out a little bit if they're new to tarot that the death card is all about death and doom and destruction and all of those things. Nope, that's the tower card. But anyway, we are gonna talk a little bit about these two cards and how they compare and contrast. They are both still numbered 13 in the Major Arcana, and they both still are called the death card, which we saw is not always the case in the Saki Saki deck. So they are very similar actually in a lot of ways and we're gonna talk about that. I wanna start with the Rider Weight death card so that we have all of the typical symbolism and we can look at that and go, oh, okay, yeah. And the Saki Saki deck has some of that, but not all. The Rider Weight death card is a card that, again, a lot of people look at and go, oh, it's number 13, that's bad luck death is bad, it's got skulls, it's got death and all these kinds of things on it. And it's really more of a transformation card. I think my favorite tarot card of the death has been in the insect tarot, which I do have video of that as well, because it really shows that it is a transformation card rather than just an ending. It is also transformation that is natural and expected and something that we all go through. So it doesn't necessarily have to be death in the physical sense, but we all go through processes where we kind of kill our old selves, or our old belief systems, or we let our old belief systems die off and we grow into something new and exciting. In order for that to happen though, there does have to be a transition point. There does have to be death. So in this particular card, Death is obviously riding a white horse. He is skull-faced in armor. I do like that he's not just the Grim Reaper because he's not wearing the robes. He's wearing kind of a knight's armor. He's carrying the flag with the lily or the rosette on it, depending who you talk to. And both of these things can represent death and transformation and peace as well. So. You can see in front of him, there are three people who look like they're in the process of death or dying, or at least going to sleep. You have the man who has fallen. I think he's just, yeah, he's just, I don't know, he may be a king. I think he's a king, yes, because his crown is on the ground. So we have the king and the child and the woman, and then standing before death is the religious person, the pope sort of character, and even he, again, will fall to death at some point because we all do. In the background of this card, high up in the background in the mountains, there's the pillars that you will find are very similar to those in the tower card as well as in the moon card. So we are kind of leading past all of those things that we've experienced or we're leading to all of those things that we're experiencing with respect to where are we going with this? Did we come from that? Because we know that the major arcana are a cycle. So did we come from those places or are we going towards those places? The sun is setting, so we have that death aspect of the day. And the sky is kind of this muted color. It's kind of maybe blue almost, but again, it's peaceful. Everything about this card really is very peaceful. It's not death come riding in like we saw in the Knight of Swords where he's running quickly. It's just a slow and steady pace. Death just comes for all of us and we cannot get away. And it doesn't matter how quickly or how slowly death moves, it's gonna get us no matter what. So I like that death is just sort of parading through rather than running through or at a standstill. So what about the Saki Saki one. All right, there's so much on this one that I can pick apart. 
One, it still sort of has the flower on the flag. It's a very abstract flower, but he is holding the standard. He is holding the flag. It does still say death, and I want to make sure you guys can see the whole animal on here. I don't really think it looks like he's riding a horse. I think it looks like he's riding a dog, and here is why. I think that it has more to do with Cerebus, or Spot, shall we say, and the got the dogs in the underworld. That's just my take on it. It probably is a horse, but I like the fact that it kind of has a dog-like energy or look to it because I get that whole Hades sort of thing going on too. The sky in this one is a little more cloudy, and we've talked about it before that like clouds and how the clouds are represented can represent emotions. And in this case, death and that kind of ending or transformation energy, it's not a bright and sunny thing usually. It's kind of a contemplative, that calm before rain or right after a rain where the clouds are still kind of thin and wispy. And you're not a full out storm, but it's kind of like mellow. Everything feels very calm and muted. So I like that. Also, you'll notice on this one, down in the corner, there is a little Scorpio emblem because, yes, the death card does represent Scorpio. And I think on this one, it had Pluto too. Nope, I guess not. It might be another one. There's a lot of cards that I have that have the astrological symbols on them, which at some point, my friend Ra, who does her astrology stuff, she will come and join me and we'll talk about all of that kind of thing. I want to do that big time. So the death card in this case still holds true to we have our death riding on the horse. And again, the horse is not running quickly. Although I will say, I don't think any of the animals are running quickly or kind of in a rampant stance in the Saki Saki deck. I think they're all kind of more mellow looking or at a standstill. So in this case, death is just sort of standing there. It does creep me out a little that the horse's mouth or the dog's mouth is kind of open like, rawr, I'm going to get you. That's a little freaky. But again, all of the colors in this card are very washed out. They seem very mellow and very calming. So all of that is represented as well. So transformation, calm, transition, letting go of the past, dying a little bit to let something new grow and that piece in between. Again, this is kind of the chrysalis phase, which is why the insect tarot is like one of my favorites. So this is the thing that happens when you've talked about all these cards, you keep referencing back to each and every one of them and your favorite parts. So I really like this card in both because no matter if you just started reading or not, the death card is probably familiar to you anyway. Thank you, Hollywood. But you still have, it's still called the death card. It's not called anything different and you know what it represents, especially if you do your research and know that it's not necessarily everybody's gonna die. So thank you again. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you like picking apart these cards. I definitely do. The Saki Saki Tarot deck, I do have a link in the description below where you can buy it. I don't get any kickback or anything from that. Just support the artists. I really love these decks and these cards. So support the people who make them. And someday maybe I'll even make my own deck. Who knows, I say that every time. I probably never will. Either way, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, and I'll see you again soon.